Hey everyone, Paul here. I want to take a look at Slumber J, ticker SLB, and I think this is actually a stock that represents some pretty good value. So I want to cover things, uh, you know, from what the company is to uh, share price performance, uh, quarterly financials, some positive developments I wanted to call out, what the analysts are saying, as well as a, a analysis of the free cash flow per share. So let's get into it. And what does this company do? It's really a big company. Uh, they supply the industry's uh, comprehensive range of projects and services from exploration through production and integrated pour to pipeline solutions that optimize hydrocarbon recovery to deliver reservoir performance sustainably. So that's what the company does. And I like to kind of think about it a little bit. They're not directly, you know, the oil producers or, you know, drillers and things of that nature, but they're supplying the shovel to the industry so that the people who are doing that work can get it done. So in this overheated market, you know, there's a lot of areas that are expensive, but there is still good value. So that's what I'm trying to find. And and uh, Slumberger seems like it's uh, a good candidate for that. And we look at where it was when it bottomed in 2020. It was right around $14 a share. It has rallied over, you know, pretty close to about 60% since then. So it has increased a lot. But if we look at where this was trading before the pandemic hit in 2020, this thing was trading in a range between, you know, the about the 30s all the way up to $48 a share. So, you know, to me, when you look at it just from that standpoint, you know, it, it still represents, uh, you know, some more upside from where it was, if we can actually see some positive signs in the business. So let's go ahead and take a look at the quarterly financials and see if we can find any positives. Here is a look at the quarterly uh, financials here from June 2018 through December 2020, which was just recently reported. Uh, so one of the bright spots, we can see that on a sequential basis, uh, their top line revenue was actually improved from 5.2 billion to 5.5 billion. So there was an increase of 5% from Q3 to Q4. So that was certainly positive that they were able to not only stabilize, but to start to grow their revenue uh, on a quarter over quarter basis, uh, at least on a sequential basis. Um, what we can also see is the margin has been steadily marching higher since June uh, or Q2 2020. So it, uh, the gross profit margin was 8%. Uh, in Q2 and then up to 12.1 and then up to 12.7%. So this shows that the company, even though they've still lost a lot of sales, uh, you know, they've been able to be really disciplined with their cost cutting and they had some cost cutting initiatives already in place, actually, which was well timed uh, before the pandemic. Um, and it's really kind of paid dividends for them for how they've been able to stabilize this and manage this. Because if we look at that, again, with the crazy year that tw uh, 2020 has been and for for again, giving up as much as they've given up on the top line, this 12.7%, uh, you know, is you know really kind of in line with some of the pre-pandemic range that they've had for gross margin. So I think that uh, you know certainly if we can start talking about some expanding the top line again, and they kind of keep some of those cost-cutting measures in place, I think that is going to just further lead to increased margins, uh, higher free cash flow, all of those things. So all good things for the company and good reasons to be potentially invested in it. I wanted to call out four positive developments for this company as well. So, you know, we're going to start up in the upper left hand corner here. We see that, you know, SLB, they're positioned well to gain market share as more oil producers are looking uh, for a way to reduce their footprint because they have technology in place to be able to help reduce upstream carbon emissions as well as uh, new energy business focused on developing clean hydrogen uh, and geothermal power. Um, so those those are some ways where it's like, you know, hey, there's been this trend towards wanting to get into clean energy and SLB has the technology in place to help oil companies achieve that. So that's one of the ways that they're going to be able to, um, you know, be a good investment uh, over the next few years. Uh, in the lower left-hand corner, we can see that, you know, just from a, you know, a macroeconomic standpoint that, you know, the stabilization of oil prices, uh, you know, in, in some factors being in place where oil prices might actually be appreciating uh, as we move through 2021. That is certainly a positive because, again, it's as more companies are going to be out there uh, engaged in uh, exploration and production, uh, they're going to need to rely on uh, SLB's technology uh, to an even greater extent. So that'll certainly be a net positive for this company. And we look in the upper right hand corner that, you know, uh, Slumberger, they've spent more on R&D than all of their service uh, company peers combined uh, and more than all the oil majors. So technology is a big driver for this company. And obviously it's something that they, uh, you know, realize with with uh, how much they're they're investing in their R&D. And again, to, to kind of, you know, continue on with that, the company has 
a multi-decade record of innovation and improving ability, and I think this is really key too, to generate shareholder value even in dismal oil market conditions. And I think this kind of explains why they've been able to, uh, you know, kind of been able to have that success with their margins, right? So, I mean, like we know that there have been other challenging markets that SLB has operated in and been successful. So there's a lot of reason to believe that they're going to be able to come out on the better side of this thing as well. And finally, in the lower right-hand corner, I wanted to call out, this was something the CEO said. So we talk about the adoption of smart technology in oil fields uh, and offices, things of that nature. Um, the CEO had this to say. They said that the best example of this was the application of our Agora Edge AI and Internet of Things solution to our APS project in Ecuador. By connecting field equipment to the cloud and running predictive AI at the edge, we boosted production 30% on Agora connected wells while significantly reducing field crew visits to these wells and as such, cutting uh, HSE exposure and environmental impacts. So again, some real world examples about how their technology have been able to help their partners, um, again, which is going to be great for the company uh, as well. Here, let's take a look at what some of the analysts are saying. So we have in the upper right hand corner, we've got Morningstar, CFRA, and Argus. They're all, uh, you know, have price targets that are you know well above where the stock is currently trading, um, currently at about $22. Morningstar has a price target of $48, CFR, CFRA at $34, and Argus at $30. Um, so Morningstar is the most aggressive. But even if we look, you know, over here, we see that, you know, some firms out here, you know, JP Morgan, um, they've got a price target of 21 uh, You know, who else do we have? We see another one. Another analyst uh, set a, a price target of basic $18.10. So even some of the ones that are a little bit more pessimistic, again, when we look at a $22 price point, you don't have that much risk if this company actually did fall to $18, if it falls to $21. Um, you know, the downside looks pretty limited. Uh, but then again, when we look at, again, some of these more bullish analysts, if some of these things come to fruition, there, there's certainly much more upside from this. But now I want to walk you through uh, an analysis from a free cash flow perspective, um, just kind of walk you through what the company's done historically and how that might shape out in the future. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so if we look at what this company has done historically, so SLB, they generate a free cash flow per share of $1.20 in 2017, $1.78, and then $1.95. And then in 2020, um, they really did, you know, didn't generate any free cash flow. Uh, but again, we did see, uh, as we covered in the quarterly financials, that they did start to see the the margin expansion um, as they were moving throughout the year. Again, positive signs. And in Q4, they actually able to they were able to generate some pretty strong uh, free cash flow in the uh, fourth quarter, which bodes pretty well for how they're able to do going forward. So I'm not going to put them straight ahead in 2021 and saying that they're going to be able to jump right back into what they were doing in 2019. But I do think that is something that they can build towards as they you know move throughout the cycle here and, and in fact if we look again with that dollar 95 in 2019 i'm not actually even in this model saying that they're going to reach that profitability or that free cash flow per share until 2026 so that's pretty far out but at the same time when we discount these future cash flows back uh, by a nine percent discount rate and we add up all of these uh future cash flows we come back with a, a present value of about $27 a share. Uh, and then again, we keep in mind that the current share price is $22.21. That would imply that based on this analysis that they're undervalued by 24%. And then also, you know, this, you know, looking at it from this perspective, I think that this also helps to put some of those analysts uh, uh, price targets into perspective. Because again, I don't think that it's completely, you know, out of the question to say that, that it, from a model that says that they're not going to reach uh, the profitability that they had basically um, in 2019 until 2026. I don't think it's a far-fetched far -fetched model. And the fact that even with these uh, set of circumstances that they'd be worth about $27 a share or again, 24% more than we're currently trading at. I just think that this represents a, a pretty good value. Again, seems like the downside's pretty low, upside's pretty high. This is something that I own shares in. Uh, and I think actually, you know, I'm going to be looking to, if anything, add more to my position. So wanted to let you guys know what my thoughts were, why I own it, why I like it, but continue to look for value in an overheated market. So if you got any value out of this, I would love it if you could subscribe to this channel and I will talk to you guys next video.